Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. <laughs> oh, we have a nice image, Dean. So I put my message together. I live my message most of the week. I put my message together on Saturday mornings. Well, yesterday I had no Wi-Fi. I had no computer technology at all. So I'm piecing things together with Dean yesterday through Texas and asked him to print some things for me this morning. And I'm like, I need the Holy Spirit to be in charge here this morning because I'm not sure how this is all going to go. And I praise God that he has been here with us this morning. Amen. 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 I have to tell him, the Wi-Fi came on for like two minutes and it printed his sermon. Yeah. And that's all it did. And then it went out again. It did. Tell me God's not in control. <laughs> God is definitely in control as much as we want to let him be in control. Amen? Amen. Sign, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. Catchy, but yet, sign, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. Here I am, God. Here I am. When do we get to that point? I know of a great man that gave unselfishly, never thinking of himself. He was a man of God and found rest and the very Jesus we come here to honor. And there's a story behind this person that I'll share in a little bit. Do we find rest in God? Do I find rest in God? We might want to think about what does resting in God mean? Because we're busy people. We're busy, and I have found over my years being in the church environment, busy people are busy people. They're just busy. Well, is that really what God's looking for in us? I would ask you the question now. Busy people are busy people. And do we find rest in God? I will share more about this person that didn't have any arterial motives. He just loved like God loves us. I'm going to share a little bit more about that, but we're going to do a funny. We're going to do a funny. Earlier second service. In the foyer of the church, a young boy was looking at a plaque with names of men and women who had died in various wars. He asked the pastor, who are these people? The pastor said, these are members from our church who died in service. The boy asked, the early service or the second service? <laughs> if you love that, give God a <laughs> Oh gosh, let's share the scripture this morning, Philippians 2, 7 and 8. Say this like you mean it. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. He, what's interesting to me in this scripture is he made himself nothing. He made himself nothing. How does one do that? How does someone make himself nothing? He made himself nothing. In this world of power, strength, money, how do you make yourself nothing? You make yourself nothing because of your love for God. And this world doesn't matter. Yes, we need a job. Yes, we need to live somewhere. Yes, we need to drive somewhere, maybe. But when that consumes us and is the priority of our lives, God <laughs> is calling. <laughs> great timing, great timing. Sorry. He made himself nothing. One does that when there isn't self-gratifying motives. What's in it for me attitude? 
That's a statement that could be said. I've said it over the years, running a business, a corporation, advertising. Well, what's in it for me? What's in it for the company? We say that. What's our motive? Can we offer love to people when we're, when we're really thinking how I could get that person to help me? Is that true love? No. I would question that. I would question that. Jesus showed true humi humility when he laid aside his rights and privileges as God made him human. Jesus emptied himself to walk among us, his journey among us. He emptied himself. He didn't need power. He didn't need money. He was sent here by his Father to be with us, to show us the way to live, to walk in harmony with one another, to love one another, to be there to help one another and support one another. Think back 100 years ago. How was life here then? I've seen some of the old movies. There was a lot more compassion for their fellow man. A little more understanding. Today, it's, it's a wreck. It's a darker world today. We, you and I, can make a difference in that. And we're commissioned to do that. He poured out his life to pay the penalty we deserve. Laying aside self-interest is essential to all our relationships, especially with our relationship with God. Laying aside our self-interest is essential to all our relationships. If you have a friend, I'm sure most of you do, it isn't all about you. If you have a friend, that's okay with it, that's great. It's a two-way relationship. It's a give and give. It's not a give and take, it's a give and give. That's what strengthens relationships. I think in general we are okay today to simply have a casual relationship with God. I think we're okay with that. We make up our greatest excuses because we can't or won't if it doesn't align with our thinking. If it doesn't align with our thinking, we immediately shut our everything off. We stop listening to mom, we stop listening to dad, we stop listening to our boss, we stop listening, listening, listening. Because we think we have a better way and a better answer. If we're truly going to give ourselves to God and say, here I am, we need to remove the barriers that hold us back. Let me ask you, what have you challenged yourself to grow into God's resting in your soul? What have you challenged yourself to grow into God's resting in your soul? Have you committed to reading a chapter in the Bible once a month? How about a week, maybe? How about one scripture a day to meditate and live it, live it out? Or do we want to live in a casual relationship with Jesus Christ? Are we okay with that? I think the majority of people are okay with that. We can get a check mark on our calendar of the days I went to church. Is that really a relationship with Jesus Christ? It doesn't happen just here on Sunday, folks. I say this time and time again. It happens beyond these walls. We are to grow and strengthen our faith journey with the shield of armor so when we walk out that door, we are protected by our God Almighty. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Have you done a random act of kindness or others and others need, that need to see it in us. For instance, I would take, and this isn't about me when I share about something I may have done, if I'm in like a steward shop or something, I will, and I see someone in greens, a military person, I will buy a cup of coffee for them. Or if they're buying something, I would help them that way, just to tell them how much I appreciate them. A little random act of kindness. We are to be different. We are to stand out in the crowd. 
We are not to blend in. We are not to just be casual about our faith. We are to be mighty in our faith. People need to see us and see that there is God in us, in our heart, that God rests in our heart. Does God rest in your heart? I've met many armed forces folks over the years and almost all of them had a, had a sense of pride serving our free country. Most of them, if not all of them, that I've ever run into had a sense of pride of serving this country that we are grateful for. Further, furthermore, most of them knew God. And here it is. Most of them wanted to know God because they were put in harm's way. They wanted to know God. What they did to want to know God that's between them and God. Are you a casual lover of God? Have you fallen in love with Him? And you want to know Him? God wants you to fall in love with Him. Like the first date you ever had. And if you do, what will happen if you fall in love with God? You will give Him everything about you. My dear friend Ray, who I spoke of earlier, who has since passed on to glory, had no motives when showing his kindness. He didn't have the things of this world. He lived in a modest home. This Ray person I'm talking about. But he had this expression of love when he spoke, when he volunteered, and when you, when, and when you miss church, he would always simply say, we missed you. Hope everything is okay. Not making you feel guilty. No motive. He just loved because he loved because he loved. How about you? How about me? Can we humble ourselves enough to lay aside our personal agendas? This isn't easy. Culture tells us that relationships offer personal gain and total, totally contradicts Jesus' Jesus's teaching. Culture tells us that relationships offer personal gain and total, totally contradicts Jesus' teachings. This world doesn't offer Jesus' ways. Very contrary to that. This faith journey that we're all on doesn't just happen because I said I went to church on Sunday. It takes work. It has to work. Your Bible should be open at home. It should remind you that I need to spend time there. Put things in your path that say, I need to spend more time with God. What music do you have on your phone? Do you listen to Christian music? Do you have cards at home that you could send a card to somebody that needs to hear that God's real? The little things in life, not the big things. The little things that represent who we are. We're a child of God and God loves us. And he's asking you to care for my people here. To love them. We are to take Christ's attitude into serving others. We must renounce personal recognition and merit. When we give up our self-interest, we can serve with joy, love, and kindness. Do you want to be a ray in the message this morning? Do you want to be a ray? Work at giving God a little more of your time, your gifts, and your talents. And let God do a wonderful works in you. He's waiting. Amen? Amen.